Hey, how's it going everyone? Welcome back to Keeping Fish Simple. So in today's video, we're gonna be doing the five best fish tank cleaners for your aquarium. Now, this is a term that I absolutely hate to use. Fish tank cleaners are often referred to things that mainly take away the job of having to clean the aquarium or somehow make it like you don't have to clean the aquarium at all. So that is not what this video is gonna be about. You can go and skip this video, you can go find another video if you want to, but you're not going to find any fish out there or any plant or anything like that that's going to be able to replace the job of having to maintain an aquarium except for yourself. I want to get that out of the way quick because all these fish and things in this video are going to be aimed at making it a little bit easier for you rather than making it a completely jobless thing because in our aquarium we've got this thing called the nitrate cycle and there's nothing that's going to keep that in balance. I mean, lots of people talk about using something called the Wallstad method which works very, very well, but there's still maintenance that needs to be done. So there's nothing really that you can do to stop the imbalance of this eventually occurring besides doing water changes. So now that we've got that out of the way, in today's video, we're in the fish room and today we're gonna be talking about the five best things that I recommend from my years of keeping fish and all the things that I've learned. So make sure you stay around to the end of the video to get all of the information and without any further ado, let's get started. So we're gonna start this list with the fifth being like the worst. There's not gonna be any bad fish on this list and then number one being the best. So number five on the list is gonna be Corydoris. So Corydoris, Corydoris, I'm sorry, this is just the way I pronounce it. I've got a lot of Corydoris and that's just the way I pronounce it. I've always done that and I'm probably wrong, so whatever. Corydoris for me are a fish that I find very cute. They're a pretty fish. There's lots and lots of different types, but the reason they're a cleaner fish is because they're not exactly something that's gonna make it easier on you in the aspect of like cleaning up poop and things like that in the aquarium. These guys are gonna be really good in a community tank for cleaning up the bottom of the aquarium where all the food falls. So not things like poop, like I just said, they're not gonna go through that kind of stuff, but they're gonna be really good at picking up any extra food that hits the bottom of the aquarium. So that's gonna mean that there's gonna be less waste, like less waste food produced down the bottom of the aquarium which is gonna you know, dank up your water and make all the nitrates and ammonia spike. So that's gonna be really, really good for you. The other thing Corydoris do as well is they go through the bottom and they sift through the bottom of the aquarium, like the substrate, and they find those little pieces of food and worms and stuff like that if you've got them in your aquariums. They can be really, really good for keeping a constant movement on the top of your substrate over a long period of time, and they're really useful for that. Now these guys do create a lot of waste because they are a catfish, so they do create a lot of poop and you're gonna need to clean up the top of the substrate up all that mold and stuff that forms over time because these guys create a lot of waste but they're really really good for cleaning up the bottom pieces of food down the bottom of the tank so if you guys are looking for some tips on keeping corridors there's going to be like a link up in the top corner and you guys can watch that video i go through all the little tips like you have to make sure these guys get food because if they're on the bottom of the aquarium sometimes they're not going to be able to get food because all the fish on the top are going to eat it before it goes to the bottom so it's a whole video on the tips and tricks for that. And then number four on my list is gonna be shrimp. So these are gonna be the neocaridinus shrimp. I'm not talking about caridinus because they're a little bit hard to take care of, but we're gonna be talking about neocaridinus. So your cherry shrimp and all that kind of stuff. These guys are really, really good tank cleaners. And the reason I say that is because these guys, first of all, eat quite a bit of algae. They're not great at cleaning the surface of the glass of the aquarium, but off of ornaments and plants and rocks and driftwood and things like that, these guys are really good. The other thing too is I find these guys are great in like a guppy tank where lots of food falls to the bottom because these guys do the same as the quarries and they eat up all that extra food. And the other thing too is, I mean, I'm guessing that if you're on this video, you're a beginner and these guys are a fantastic thing to put into like a community aquarium with really, really small fish. So these guys aren't gonna go great with big angel fish and stuff like that. Like even dwarf cichlids can sometimes be a bit big, but if you've got live bearers like guppies, they're gonna be great. Endless are probably the best match for these guys. And just lots of little small species. So if you're looking for some tank mates, there's gonna be another link to another video. You guys can watch that one. But cherry shrimp are really good at cleaning up all the food that falls to the bottom and some algae. So they're a little bit better than the Corydoris because the Corys don't eat algae, these guys do. The other thing that's great about these guys is they produce rapidly. So in the right conditions in really like in a bit cooler water, so not crazy hot like my fish room is. In cooler water, these guys produce in really, really good quantities and you can also like breed them for profit and things like that. And then number three on my list is not gonna be a fish or a shrimp invertebrate. This is gonna be beginner plants. So if you're looking for some beginner plants, another video up in one of the corners. These guys are mainly gonna be for the chemical filtration in your tank. So plants are really, really good for balancing out aquariums because they take a lot of the nasties out of the water to grow. On this channel, obviously the channel is called Keeping Fish Simple. I love to keep things simple. In all my aquariums, I try to keep some form of plant or another. Now, a lot of my aquariums in this fish room are linked up to an auto water change system. So normally I don't have to rely too much on plants to filter out a lot of the nasties because I do a lot of water changes in here. But in aquariums 
where you're trying to keep the balance of you know plants and fish and all that kind of stuff, the ecosystem together, plants do a really good job of keeping the aquarium clean. So it might not look clean, like you might have some mulm around the aquarium and things like that, but what the plants are gonna do is fish are gonna produce waste, which then is gonna form like nitrites and then nitrates. And what the plants are gonna do is they're gonna be able to suck out those nitrates and nitrites to grow. They're really beneficial for that. So they can make the aquarium a lot easier to maintain because you don't constantly have to be doing water changes and worrying too much about the balance of chemicals getting out. So that's why number three is plants. I'd recommend like off the top of my head some wisteria, java moss are really good. You want your fast growing plants, bacopa, valus and area. There's all different types and kinds of plants for you to choose from. So these are really, really good options. And number two on my list is gonna be snails. So this is gonna be pretty much any kind of snail because they all almost do the same thing. I keep a lot of ram swan snails and sometimes they can become a little bit out of hand if you overfeed the aquarium, but these guys are detritivores, so what that means is they actually do eat poop on the bottom of the aquarium and re-break it down into smaller pieces of poop because they do that. These guys are really good because they also go along the, the glass and they can eat some of that surface algae that forms, so they're pretty evenly matched on the cherry shrimp and the algae consumption. They actually can get around on the glass, which makes them a little bit better, but these guys will break down some of that poop and eat any leftover food and stuff like that on the bottom of the aquarium. Now, these guys are at number two because they can rapidly produce so if you overfeed your aquarium you're going to have an explosion of snails which i have in a lot of aquariums because i overfeed a ton because i'm trying to make stuff grow quicker i know not great strategies but i'm still learning how to use this fish room and all the systems inside of here so i don't purposely overfeed sometimes i overfeed a little bit and the snails help to clean it up so they do clean up the aquarium pretty well and for that reason they are a cleaner tank cleaner and number one on my list is going to be the bristle nose pleco so these guys are a great awesome tank cleaner they're in almost every single one of my aquariums if i need them these guys are awesome at cleaning the surface algae off of anything i've had tanks where they're completely gross and dank and green and these guys clean all that surface algae so they're really really good at eating that stuff they won't eat hair algae and they won't eat other stuff like black beard algae and things like that they won't eat that but any of the green slime that forms on the aquarium's glass and plants and stuff like that, they will eat. Now these guys also do create a lot of waste, so keep that in mind because they are gonna create a lot of waste. The reason that they're number one is because I just use them so often to put into like an aquarium and help clean it up. The other thing too is they're a great beginner fish. They're super, super hardy, hard to kill. There's lots of different types of uh, bristle nose that you can get nowadays. So you can get super reds, you can get your commons, you can get albinos, you can get long fins, you can get all different kinds of stuff. So there's plenty to choose from, depending on what price bracket you're going for. The thing that I'm gonna mention with these guys is they can get pretty big. So they can get about, I'd say five inches. Sometimes they can get a little bit bigger, but that's over a very long period of time. So these guys go great in like a 20 gallon aquarium. You can just throw one in there and they're gonna do great. And the other thing too with these guys is they're pretty easy to breed. So if you add like a cave to your aquarium and then like a male and a female, eventually they're gonna breed if you give them a long enough time. So they're a really good tank cleaner for that. But the reason I put them in number one is just because of the ability to eat that algae that forms on the surface of the glass, which I find impairs a lot of people's view into the tank and something that I want cleaned. So another thing too with these guys is you're gonna wanna have a specialty food like algae wafers. Cause when I was sold my first bristle nose, I thought they'd just eat like all the surface stuff and I thought they'd just eat algae and poop and stuff like that, which they don't. So you gotta feed them, otherwise they're gonna die. So you need to get some algae wafers and some zucchini and green beans and stuff like that. There's a ton of videos you can watch on my channel on how to care for these guys. But that's pretty much gonna be it. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it and I'll see you guys in the next one.